It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Welcome to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International with Dr. E.K.D. Quick. With your Bible in hand and your heart open to learn, let's join the teaching in progress. From the book of 2 Peter, we are teaching a series on the book of 2 Peter, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. The second epistle of Peter, written by the Apostle Peter, one of the original twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. This particular epistle of Second Peter was written approximately 60 A.D. to 65 A.D. from Babylon. The theme of Second Peter consists of teachings against apostasy, which is defined as departing from the faith in the last days. Individuals that knew the Lord Jesus Christ through salvation who chose to backslide continually, shipwrecked their faith, departed from the Lord, and went back into the world. Scripture teaches in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that in the last days many shall depart from the faith. Individuals cannot depart from the faith unless they were already in the faith. Second Peter also teaches on Christian virtues, warnings against false teachers, and the day of the Lord. This is the teaching on the second epistle of Peter, verses 1 through 4. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Here in verse 1, we see Simon Peter, Simon being the Greek version of his Jewish name, Simeon, Peter being the Greek name, smaller form of Cephas, which is rock, for Peter means rock or stone, and also in this particular introduction, he uses both names, Simon Peter, to ensure that the readers of this epistle know that it comes from the Apostle Peter. For in those days, there were many impersonations and forgeries, both by word and by letter, and Peter authenticates this by using both names and also later in the particular scriptures giving evidence of his eyewitness testimonies of Jesus Christ both before the resurrection and after the resurrection. Verse number one also speaks of salvation, precious faith that's been given to us in God through Jesus Christ. Scripture teaches in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Here again in verse 1, salvation is being attributed to God and speaks of the conversion power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2 speaks of a salutation of grace and peace 
and you'll find this throughout not only this epistle of Peter but in the Pauline epistles how grace always comes before peace for we cannot have the peace of God until we have the grace of God through Jesus Christ in that day individuals gave greetings in terms of speaking blessings upon each other grace be unto you peace be unto you shalom and words of encouragement one to another as they were greeted one to another verse number three speaks of the conversion power of the Lord Jesus Christ how this divine power allows us to be partakers of heavenly blessings and escape the world's damnation through sinful lust Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 is similar and teaches blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ once again verse 3 speaking of our Christian virtues coming from the Lord in salvation and also calls us to be holy in the Lord John chapter 3 verse 5 says that except the man be born of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God this divine nature that is spoken in verse number 4 comes from the birth of the Holy Spirit in us upon salvation we do not receive divinity as being God's but we receive the life of Christ the nature of Christ within us upon salvation first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 teaches for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit we are born of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit amalgamates itself with our dead spirit and we become quickened unto the Lord through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 4 also speaks of great and precious promises. This comes as we are now given eternal life in Jesus Christ not just eternal life in terms of everlasting life in the Lord but the life of Christ abides in us the abundant life of Christ joy and peace fulfillment and contentment in the Lord John chapter 17 verse number 2 speaks that we received eternal life through Jesus Christ the life of Christ through the Lord Jesus Christ this life spoken of in verses 3 and 4 allows us to have a relationship with the Lord allows us to walk with the Lord and talk with the Lord along life's narrow way allows us to enjoy fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ Verse number 4 speaks of escaping the world that is corrupted through lust. This world that represents the sensuality and carnality of the flesh. This world that represents covetousness and greedy gain and the appetites and the dictates of the flesh. We as Christians being converted as spoken in verses 3 through 4 are encouraged to come out of the world scripture teaches in first john chapter 2 verses 15 through 17 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We love the people in the world 
pray for the people in the world, but we come out of the world system of carnality, sensuality, and fleshly desires that will cause us to shipwreck our faith in Christ. Verses 5 through 11. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here in verses 7 through 11, Peter is saying, after you have been partakers of the Christian faith and spiritual blessings in the Lord in verses 3 through 4. Now he would like you to know that you can walk in the abundant life in verses 5 through 11. Verses 5 through 11 speak of Christian virtues, Christian character that allows us to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. This Christian character and these Christian virtues are similar to the teaching in Proverbs chapter 31 on the virtuous woman, which speaks of a woman of moral character, moral quality, virtuous characteristics that are evident as an individual walks with the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5 speaks of adding to our Faith, virtue, Christian virtues that speak of moral quality and character. Verse 5 says to add to that virtue, knowledge. Verse 6 teaches adding to the knowledge of Christ, the full knowledge of Christ, adding temperance or self-control, restraint, moderation, able to restrain the appetites and dictates of the flesh. Verse 6 teaches adding to this temperance, patience. Scripture teaches that tribulation worketh patience. And individuals as Christians have to learn patience as they learn how to wait on the Lord. Adding patience, Scripture in verse 6 teaches to add godliness. Holiness, righteousness, a godly walk with the Lord that represents the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7 teaches, adding to that godliness, we should add brotherly kindness, loving your neighbor as you love yourself, and loving in deed and not just in tongue or word. Verse 7 continues to add to brotherly kindness charity, unconditional love as outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 through 3. Verse 8 says that if he speaks to the abundant fruit production that an individual will have if these things become a part of their life. Not only will they produce fruit, more fruit and much fruit, but they will begin to have a closer walk with the Lord by having an increased knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. These particular virtues spoken of in verses 5 through 8 do not come from intelligence, academia, knowledge, nor some type of inner light, but they come by the power of the Holy Spirit, individuals that love the Lord, trust the Lord, and that are walking with the Lord in a close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 speaks of an individual that begins to go astray if they do not produce these Christian virtues. 
For they begin to soon forget where God has brought them from. As a result, verse 9 is underscoring the fact that individuals that do not produce these Christian virtues begin to no longer trust in the Lord, but trust in themselves. Verse 10 speaks of individuals making sure that they are connected and love the Lord. And as a result, in verse 11, individuals that produce these Christian virtues have a closer walk with the Lord and will begin to live the abundant life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 12 through 15. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them. And be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it is meet or appropriate, as long as I am in this tabernacle, in this body, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as the Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Here in verses 12 through 15, we have Peter giving a quasi will and testimony. He desires them to not forget the teachings that he taught, even if he happens to die. Peter, knowing that in these last days and in those particular days, there's great persecution and that his days are numbered. For in those days, there was great persecution by Emperor Nero. Not only did the apostle Paul lose his life in the later years, but Peter also soon after lost his life to martyrdom by Emperor Nero. As a result, in verse 12, he wants them to remember the teachings that he had taught them. And in verse 13, he states emphatically that as long as he's alive and in that body, he is going to put those things in their remembrance. Verse 14, he knows his day is coming as Jesus taught him in John chapter 21, verses 18 and 19, Jesus Christ told of Peter's death. And Peter knows his time is coming. Verse 15 speaks again of the hope of Peter that even after he is gone, he desires them to remember the teachings. Verses 16 through 18. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Here in verses 16 through 18, Peter is giving further credibility and validity of his teachings that he was there firsthand on the Mount of Transfiguration as quoted in Mark chapter 9 and Matthew chapter 17. Peter was an eyewitness when the glory came upon the Lord Jesus Christ. The voice of God came down from heaven proclaiming the love of his son and Peter saw this with his own eyes. Peter saw the transfiguration of Christ firsthand. Peter heard the voice of God proclaiming Jesus Christ as his beloved son. Verses 19 through 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 
Here in verses 19 through 21, Peter is stating the authenticity of the scriptures, that even though Peter in verses 16 through 18 saw the Lord Jesus Christ being transfigured and heard the voice of God come down affirming the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter is stating that there is even a more sure word of prophecy, even more sure than an eyewitness account. And he's stating that this more sure word of prophecy is the Holy Scriptures. More sure than an eyewitness account of Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. More sure than hearing God's voice on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter wants this particular church that's reading his letter to know that the Scriptures are even more sure than the eyewitness and audible witness that Peter was speaking of in verses 16 through 18. Scripture teaches in Psalm chapter 19, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. In those days and in these last days, There was great forgeries being circulated among the churches, false doctrine, false teaching, individuals misrepresenting the apostles and causing many to shipwreck their faith. A excellent example of this is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 16 through 18. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Here in Second Peter chapter 2. An example of false doctrine, false teaching, heresy by Hymenaeus and Philetus, who began to teach that individuals missed the resurrection, missed the rapture, and loved ones died in vain, and individuals in missing the rapture no longer have a reason to live for the Lord. And as a result, many Christians shipwrecked their faith by stating what good is it for us to live for the Lord if we missed the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ if the resurrection is past what's the use of living holy for the Lord individuals as a result began to shipwreck their faith here in chapter 1 verses 19 through 21 Peter is letting individuals know that they can trust in the scriptures. This will help them avoid false doctrine, false teaching, heresy that can end up shipwrecking their faith. Scripture teaches in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Peter is teaching in verse 19 that the word of God is sure. Peter's teaching in verse 20 that no interpretation is of anyone's own whim or own will. Peter is teaching in verse 21 that individuals wrote the scriptures by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as Paul taught, all scripture is without error. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Scripture is complete. Scripture is without error. And as Peter speaks of his deceased to come, they can put their trust in the teachings of Peter as Peter has taught from the scriptures. Individuals in the last days shipwrecking their faith, departing from the faith, going astray, 
have gone astray from the scriptures. Individuals that cleave unto the Lord, love the Lord, produce fruit in the Lord, will not shipwreck their faith as they learn and trust from the Holy Scriptures. This is the teaching of Second Peter chapter 1. And on today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, or if you have strayed away from His love and kindness, I invite you to pray with me this prayer. This prayer of rededication. This prayer of salvation. Please pray this prayer with me today. Oh God, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me today. Forgive me, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you for listening to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International. LCMI is a Christian non denominational teaching ministry based solely on the Holy Bible, dedicated to pleasing God, glorifying Jesus Christ, and ensuring that the Bible is the foundation for everything this ministry proclaims and endorses. For more information, log on to our website at lifechangingministries.com. Please join us again next time for more Bible teaching. And remember, we have the victory through Jesus Christ.